Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we'll be talking about Coach Kelly Harper and our Lady Vols in a heartbreaking loss versus South Carolina in the ACC tournament. And we'll also be talking about our men's basketball team and where they stand heading into the NCAA tournament. And finally, we'll be talking about John Tay Gilbert. He had a big visit up on Rocky Top this past weekend. How did it go? We'll kind of break all of that down. But before we get into anything, do us a really big favor. If you would like to help support this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. That's the easiest way to do it. And if you'd like to take it one step further, please do consider becoming a member of this channel. That really helps us grow as, you know, we are continuing to, you know, work on pushing things out more to more Vol fans like yourself. All right, so we're going to start it off with our Lady Vols in the SEC tournament, okay? We are the five seed playing up against the number one seed in that tournament in South Carolina. And we were down like 20-something points, and we fought our way back, end up having the lead. 73 to 71 with about one second left to go in the game. And a lot of people are calling for Coach Harper's head because of the way that she decided to play defense versus South Carolina. Basically, what we did is we said, OK, we are going to protect the paint. We're going to look at it, you know, from an odds perspective. And the best odds are the closer that you get to the basket. So you don't want to give South Carolina an opportunity close to the basket. You don't want to give them any easy twos to be able to tie the game up and take it into overtime. So what we did is we defended South Carolina's shooters, okay? Every single one of them. We defended them well, and we also defended the paint. Now, what South Carolina did is they took their biggest post presence and put her out at the three-point line. And, of, of course, like, we're not going to go out and guard her if our main objective is to stop the easy shots. That was probably the lowest percentage shot on the court. And if you look at this from South Carolina's perspective, as this – whole play is kind of unfolding okay once the ball gets to cardono's hands you're like oh my gosh please don't shoot it but she shot it she banks it in it was luck and she makes it right so we left her wide open and i kind of like what coach harper did in this situation that was a very low percentage shot that south carolina made so don't be too hard on her we are about to listen to what she had to say about you know what the defensive game plan was heading into this play but I just want for y'all to keep in mind that I think that she did the right thing, okay? Now, maybe, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Maybe, you know, you bring somebody out there to kind of guard her, anybody, okay? If anyone is wide open for three, maybe you put someone in their face. But she's never made a three-point shot in her life. And that was luck. I mean, she banked it in. That was a 1,000% a luck. If we were to, you know, go through that and do it 10 more times, she probably wouldn't make it 10 more times. So, that's why, you know, I'm kind of siding with Coach Harper, but we'll listen to what she had to say. Hey, Kelly, can you just take us through the defensive strategy y'all had on that final position? Yeah, didn't call a timeout because they did they did not have one. And um, I wanted Tamari to be in the paint so we, they couldn't get a pass to the paint. But obviously, and we were trying to get Rakia back there in the play. Um, but obviously, at the end of a game like that, everyone is a shooter. You, you know, because you could luck one in in that moment. So we just didn't didn't get where we needed to um, to to get that defended. All right, and in listening to that, you can tell that she's very emotional. And uh, you know, some of the people that was asking questions, right? Some of the media presence that we had, uh, you know, up in Tennessee, they were also emotional. You could kind of hear the cries in their voice because it was such a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking loss. But again, the team clawed back. The team fought hard. And once the team kind of stop, stops fighting, that's when I think it's time to go ahead and break ties with that coach. But the team fought for Coach Harper and, you know, for their other teammates. So I really like that. And, you know, I think that she can get it fixed sometimes, okay, whenever these types of things happen, you know, you lose like this. Uh, you know, in a tournament situation or more towards the end of a season, it can kind of help make your team better. You know, it can kind of get your team refocused heading into the tournament, which our Lady Vols will be in the tournament. Uh, we were in eighth seed, but we might kind of move down to like a ninth or tenth seed, whatever. To me, that kind of stuff doesn't matter too much. It's just about getting into the tournament because once you get in, you have a chance. What we saw with South Carolina, how they won with luck, that can happen with us too, as long as we can stay close in these games. And this team has shown the fight, okay? Coach Harper has shown that she can, you know, coach them up to get them there. So I don't think it's time necessarily to cut ties with Coach Harper, 
But please let me know y'all's thoughts down in the comments section because I would love some different perspectives on this. All right, now on to our men's basketball team. We talked about the loss versus Kentucky last night, and I told y'all I feel fine about it just because it's all about the NCAA tournament. It's all about winning a national title, and I still think that this team is in a great position to do it. Now, a lot of people have been speculating on can we still be that one seed, or is it even good for us to be the one seed? We might have a better matchup you know, at a two seed, but it does look like Tennessee will be able to maintain that one seed. Now, the bracketology for ESPN or for CBS Sports hasn't come out just yet. That's what I usually go by. But on three did have something. I'm going to pull this article up for y'all. And it's by James Fletcher the third. We're going to scroll down because they're just talking about how they see things kind of playing out. The number one seed, okay, is Purdue. Number two, they've got Iowa State. I don't know how much sense that makes. And then uh, down here, we've also got Tennessee as another number one seed. And this is, you know, this just came out a couple of hours ago. So this is after our loss to Kentucky. Now, we did talk about Arizona possibly being able to lose to USC, and they did lose to USC, I think by like 10 points or something like that. So I would say that Arizona is out as far as being a one seed. And, you know, you can kind of see what they're saying right here on, on three about Tennessee as a one seed. It says that Tennessee looked like it could fall back Onto the two seed line after losing the regular season finale against Kentucky. However, a late loss by Arizona helped keep the Vols on top and actually further the gap between the two teams heading into postseason play. And at this point, a lot of people are speculating will North Carolina be a team that Tennessee has to worry about getting a one seed because they just beat Duke and they also beat us head to head. And a lot of people just start, you know, speculating that. Uh, you know, the bracket makers are going to say, OK, well, we're going to put North Carolina ahead of Tennessee as the one seed that could happen. I mean, I don't know how they, you know, read into all this stuff. I don't know how everything will play out. But I think that at the end of the day, if you look at the totality of a team's schedule of their record, Tennessee's strength of schedule is a lot better than North Carolina. So I do think that we will be able to maintain that one seed spot. Now, what's it mean heading into the SEC tournament? Do we need to win a game or two? I would say so. You know, maybe one, maybe even two games. We probably have to do that. But then after that, we can go on ahead and lose. And I don't think that the team will be necessarily looking at it this way. But just for me as a fan, that's what I would like to see. Because I don't want to see, uh, you know, our guys being too tired, too drained, heading into the tournament. Again, that's what really, really matters. So I love where our balls are sitting at. And hopefully, you know, this loss same thing that we talked about with our Lady Vols, the loss versus South Carolina. Maybe our loss to Kentucky will help kind of get our guys back refocused and continue to get, to play with that hunger that I feel like we're going to need, uh, you know, heading into the NCAA tournament. All right, in the last segment of the day, we're going to be talking about four-star cornerback Jonte Gilbert from Atlanta, Georgia at Douglas High School. We'll kind of talk more about why I think this is a huge, huge need for our volunteers moving forward. But let's hear how his visit went, okay? We'll start right here at this quote where it says, it was great, Gilbert said. It was one of the best visits I've had before. I feel like I really got to talk ball with Coach Martinez and Coach Banks. I got to catch up with Coach Garner and all those guys like Coach Hype. That was good. So, you know, that's a really big deal. Sounds like he likes the staff and he likes what they're talking about. Now on to his next quote. It says, I feel like they are two of the best in the nation right now, if you ask me. And he's talking about, Coach Martinez and Coach Banks, okay? So we all know that Coach Martinez is the cornerbacks coach and Coach Banks is our defensive coordinator. So his quote continues and it says, they like that I can play all of the different positions in the secondary. They see me as a field corner, boundary corner, and as a free safety guy and at the star position, all right? And he also says that they like that he has a safety's frame with a corner's technique and a corner's footwork he said that that was good to hear. That's always good to hear. That's probably like the ultimate compliment that you can get as a secondary player. So I love that he loves that. It lets me know that he understands the game of football. And obviously our coaches, I mean, they're spot on with it. We've seen some of Jonte's film, and I would say that's exactly what he is. We'll talk more about that after this article. And now in his next quote, he's talking about his time with Coach Heupel up on campus. And he says, we've just been talking ball ever since he came to my school back in January. Just what he sees me as and it was good. So we will continue to scroll. And uh, he's talking about Coach Chop right here. Now, this is a big quote. I really love to see and hear this. He says, he's a great coach and great at what he does if you're a recruit. If he's recruiting you, why not commit? 
All right, and now on down, he's talking about the players that he knows that's already on Rocky Top, that's already part of this team. And he says, I know Christian Conyer, and I met Boo Carter today. I know John Slaughter and Jordan Matthews. I got to see Boo do some work, and he looked good. He knew what he was doing. And right down here, it also says, after today, they made a big impression on me, so I'd say a top three school for me. All right, so number one, let's talk about Jonte, okay? Exactly what the coaching staff said about him, that's what he is. He is a player with a cornerback's fundamentals, uh, with the cornerback's athleticism. And as far as from an athletic perspective, cornerback is going to be the most athletic position on the entire team. We've talked about this, uh, you know, team going into the winter workouts and, you know, kind of coming out of it that the coaching staff will have access to those next gen stats, to the GPS tracking, all of that. The cornerbacks, their numbers are going to be crazy. They're going to have the best numbers in those metrics. So he's got that working for him, but he's also definitely got a safety size. Six foot one with some very long arms. Listed at 185 pounds right now. I think that he can very easily get up to 200, maybe to 205 pounds and continue to play as we're seeing on his films right now. So I think that he can do a whole lot of different things. We know that this staff loves the versatility at every single position group. But I think it's even more important to have it at, uh, you know, in the secondary, just because those guys, man, like whenever you've got that size, you got that length and you can cover, you can move guys around. And we all know that players get hurt, but it's so big to be able to play man to man coverage, to be able to get off blocks, come up and make tackles. And I can also tell you this, him coming from Douglas High School, something else that we've talked about in a couple of other previous videos. That's where Jamal Lewis came from. And that's the place that Coach Former and his staff would frequent. They always got players from Douglas High School. And if you know anything about Atlanta, then you would know that that's coming from the west side of the city. That's in the trenches. All of those players are going to come in with a different mindset, with a different mentality. They've seen things that a lot of these other players haven't seen. So it's good to have those types of dogs on your roster. And I don't know why, but it does kind of seem like college teams haven't been recruiting Douglas High School as much here recently, at least not as much as they used to back in the 90s. But I think that it's huge that Tennessee is doing that. Another part of the reason I'm saying that is because those players typically don't even want to go to the University of Georgia. And I don't really know why, but we've got to go out and get those types of players because, again, they're dogs. They're going to play with that chip, with that edge. They're playing for something a lot more than, you know, probably about 85 percent of the players in college football will be playing for. So it means more to them. We always talk about the SEC. It just means more. Well, for those players, it means even more than that. So I think that he will be an absolute and total dog. And it will be big for us to be able to, you know, kind of create a pipeline with Douglas High School and with, you know, more of these city types of schools where we know that we're going to be getting some very, very tough players from. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, whenever you're talking about winning championships, you have to have several players like this. I also feel like Jonte could come in and, uh, you know, eventually end up being one of the leaders of this team. You know, that's just the way that he's going to be cut. OK, that's just a whole different place. It's almost, you know, I kind of hate to say this, but coming from that side of town is almost like a third world country. So I really like the upside that he has, not just on film, but also just in knowing what he has had to go through in his day to day. So that's really big news. And hopefully Tennessee can close out on him and several more prospects from the inner city in Atlanta. But that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for staying all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.